There we go. It's a little throw into my uh, mediation settings. I always have that set up. And with that, we're going to get underway. So it's uh, 6.07 p.m. I want to uh, welcome everybody tonight to uh, this wonderful meeting of the New York County Lawyers Association's ADR Committee. We have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Zeno, from the Vice President of the American Arbitration Association, who is going to be speaking about how uh, arbitration, as well as, uh, I guess, ADR in general, has changed um, in light of uh, COVID, what the AAA is looking for um, in arbitrators. And of course, the Republican have a ton of questions afterwards. That's why we're going to be front loading our program tonight with Mr. Zeno. I just want to kick things off uh, very quickly with a uh, prelude. We have an agenda for those people who are uh, committee members. Um, let me just say, first of all, the, uh, the ADR committee is planning great events like you have tonight. So if you're interested in joining, uh, please send me an email or Nelson uh, Timken, who is our vice chair, or Chris Fladgate, who's also on tonight. They're all uh, co-hosts and will probably be helping me in handling questions. With uh, and Send them a, an email and we'll put you in touch with the people at NICLA who can get you on the ADR committee. Okay, so uh, just to go through the agenda for those people um, who haven't actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share out my screen so everybody can see that. Uh, da -da, sorry, go time. Okay, yeah, should be it. There we go. And we got through introductions. So, uh, welcome everybody. It's upcoming events that we have. I'm just going to introduce these very quickly. Uh, on October 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, with a 30 minute virtual nightcap, we're going to have afterwards the panelists have agreed to stay on for to answer questions. Sure, we're going to have them. We have starting and maintaining successful ADR practice in the age of COVID 19 and beyond. You see uh, the faculty over here. We have uh, Jess Bunshaft, Theo Chang, uh, Marilyn Genoa, those is uh, before she's uh, sends her regards, uh, Jennifer Lupo, uh, Chuck Newman, uh, and Michael Starr. So you got uh, effectively, including myself and, and Chris, you have uh, four chairs right now of, uh, of ADR committees, of various bar associations. We're gonna be all getting together to discuss um, how to start and maintain a successful ADR practice in the age of COVID-19 and beyond. You see the topics over here uh, for those people who are in FOA, and I'll just briefly read them. We're going to be discussing qualifications, certification programs, incorporation, networking, mentoring, and shadowing, accounting, revenue generation, uh, getting paid, always a, a big uh, topic, getting experience, joining panels, insurance, uh, risk management, and more. So um, please you know, um, mark your calendars for that. Uh, very equitably priced, uh, and this is part of a uh, probably a, at least a two-part, maybe a three-part, we have yet to decide, series, with the second part being in December. Again, this is not just a uh, pep talk or war stories, but concrete information and how to start an ADR practice from the experts who did it themselves. Uh, so it should be a very interesting evening. Then uh, coming after that, we have what I call entrenchment uh, mediation training, and that's uh, to be taught primarily uh, by the Appellate Division Second Department Mediation Program, uh, Mandatory Mediation Program Special Masters. Uh, it's going to be kicked off by uh, Carol Swidler. That's going to be on, who's the Assistant Deputy Chief Appellate Att Court Attorney for the uh, Appellate Division. She's basically their ADR coordinator and does a phenomenal job uh, dealing with that program uh, with, with hundreds of cases, uh, if not even thousands at this point. That's going to be on uh, November 10th, 2020, from 5.15 to 7.45 p.m. Just very briefly, uh, let me explain what I, the, the term entrenchment means. In this particular program, in the Appellate Division Mandatory Mediation Program, uh, the parties have already done their briefing. So they are already post-perfection, and they are ready to go to oral argument. And effectively, at this point, there's not much of an incentive for them to mediate. Uh, so they are coming into the mediation process with uh, reservations as to co first coming to the table in the first place and then staying at the table. And the idea behind that being that they're so entrenched, that's what the, uh, the term means, is to come up with ways for mediators to encourage them to go forward with the process and to break what uh, the special masters know as the 90 minute barrier. You see that in the um, description over there, which basically under the rules, the first 90 minutes is given gratis um, to the parties and afterwards they uh, stay on to pay the mediators agreed upon rate. So the question is, uh, how do you get past the 90 minute barrier? And then even when you do, I, I thank God I've been able to do it twice. Uh, the people who are going to be speaking have, have done it uh, many times, uh, particularly Pierre de Revelle de Slepon. Uh, he, he's done it uh, numerous times. 
uh, but all of them are, are phenomenal at, uh, at what they've done. They're all senior special masters. They'll be speaking about that and that also how to surmount impasse. Uh, even if you break the 90 minute barrier, uh, there's a significant amount of impasse given that the parties have already done their proposed perfection work. So that's coming up on November 10th. Also other works that are in, in progress and uh, we're just gonna go quickly through them. Uh, part 137 is the NYCLA's attorney client uh, fee dispute resolution program. We handle the cases for that pro pro uh, program, which is state run through OCA from both New York County and the Bronx. Uh, right now, we're working with Anthem Marie Bova, who is uh, NYCLA's general counsel, to revamp the program so as to conduct arbitrations and mediations, because NYCLA actually has Part 137 mediations uh, virtually. So we're retooling that program right now. I'm actually, along with Chris and Nelson, in charge of it. And uh, just uh, to give full disclosure, we even have ongoing active ones now. We've already started up. I have uh, a tech check coming up this Wednesday. So it's, um, it's a great, great thing to, um, to have to be, be a part of, you know, to serve the community. And then we hope that people who are interested in that uh, here, when that training is announced, we're probably looking at uh, December at this point. Uh, we actually already have a, a tentative date of December 9th. We already have uh, Professor Grant Tanasian lined up from Fordham. He's gonna be uh, discussing the part 137 arbitration prong on that day. And the second day is still to be determined, but that's moving along very nicely. So please take a look at the um, announcements. And if you're not a member of, of NYCLA, that'll be posted on the NYCDR lister, listserv that Maria Volpe role, runs as well. Um, okay, we also just very quickly have plans later on, probably in winter, uh, spring 2021 for bankruptcy mediation training, uh, an international arbitration CLE. Um, Nelson, by the way, is the, so just so everybody came on uh, afterwards, Nelson Tipkin, our vice chair, just to uh, introduce him again, he's taking uh, international arbitration right now with Fordham as part of an LLM program. So we're probably gonna have some of his uh, professors presenting at that. And um, then we're also planning on doing uh, a basic mediation training, probably much later, that's gonna be in the spring or summer, uh, looking at things. So we got a lot of great event events planned. With that though, I'm gonna move into the main event uh, for tonight, let me uh, introduce uh, Jeffrey Zeno from uh, Vice President of the American Arbitration Associ Association. Uh, Jeff has been everywhere. I can tell you going back to 2015 uh, with the NYSBA's uh, annual commercial mediation, arbitra uh, not mediation, commercial arbitration training, which is uh, run with Charles Moxley, Edna Sussman, uh, Leah Cockhaber, and a bunch of uh, uh, other people, uh, uh, which is a, is a great program. I uh, met him there and I can tell you he's uh, been a, a master at uh, arbitration events in terms of, of being present and uh, advancing arbitration in New York. So it's a phenomenal uh, privilege to have him tonight and to address us. He's going to be speaking to us uh, for whatever he wants, but they're thinking about 45 minutes but I'm sure there are gonna be a bunch of questions. So if you want to go for an hour, you know, Jeff, the, the floor is yours. Tonight's topics are gonna to be on AAA operations in the age of COVID, uh, arbitration opportunities in the New York metropolitan area, one of which I just told you about before when we get the part 137 program started up again, you'll have some opportunities there, though those go, do go very quickly. And what the uh, AAA is looking for in prospective arbitrators and mediators seeking admission to its panels and rosters of neutrals. So with further ado, I'm going to stop my screen share over here, and I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Great. Thank you so much, Ilan, and uh, I really appreciate this. It's great to see everyone here today. And I think I know a lot of you, <laughs> and I'm recognizing a lot of faces. This is, this is terrific. I want to thank the New York County uh, Lawyers Association, ADR section, Ilan and Nelson, uh, for this opportunity tonight uh, to speak to you. It's, it's great. Uh, please feel free to ask questions throughout uh, when I'm talking. I'm going to be talking for about 45 minutes. But we'll also have a little time at the end. But uh, if there's something you want to ask when I'm, I'm mentioning something, please uh, just unmute yourself and ask me. Uh, you know, I, I do this quite frequently with law students. And I, I actually, I did with Nelson's class uh, the other day. And uh, I don't mind being interrupted, trust me. Uh, so with that, I will start off with, uh, I got some advanced questions. The first question was, and I'll just read the question so you guys will know what I'm going to be talking about, of the nature type of arbitration services that AAA provides and how the pandemic has changed the way AAA has, uh, uh, provides arbitration services through, for example, technological options such as Zoom arbitration. So what, what is a AAA and what have we been doing? Okay, the, well, the AAA is the largest ADR provider uh, in the world. 
We do about 300,000 cases a year. Uh, a lot of people are surprised when they hear that. 300,000 cases per year, okay? And uh, we have 6,000 arbitrators on our panel, uh, 6,000. Uh, 25% of our panel is diverse. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, there's been you know, some talk about uh, this, this area that we're in is not too diverse, but uh, you know, 25% of our, uh, our panel is diverse. AAA has 600 employees uh, across the nation, 26 offices in 18 uh, states, and we have an office in Singapore. We just off opened an office in Singapore about a year ago, right before the uh, pandemic. Okay, and our company, our staff is 65% diverse. So that's the makeup of the AAA. Now we started in 1926, 1926, one year after the Federal Arbitration Act uh, was in 1925. Uh, and uh, I mentioned this because it's, it's kind of interesting. We moved our, our office uh, space, and I was a part of this, we moved our office space from Midtown to Downtown in 2013. And it's, it was kind of interesting. We moved right across the street from our original office uh, at, at 120 Broadway. Our headquarters is there at 120 Broadway right now. I'm actually not there. I'm actually in Midtown. Uh, a lot of you probably know that have, that know me. Uh, my office is right across the, the uh, Chrysler building. Uh, but we do have, uh, like I mentioned, 26 offices uh, across the uh, across the nation. Now, um, I wanted to talk about the types of cases that we've been doing since uh, 1926. Our first caseload was labor, okay? That was our legacy caseload. We only did labor initially, uh, and the arbitrators did it for free. <laughs> now, nowadays, arbitrators don't do it for free, okay? But in, in 1926, uh, uh, they were doing it for free. But since then, we've grown tremendously, okay? And, and uh, tremendously. And a lot of you that are either on our panel or know about us know that. We do, I'm in commercial. Uh, I do commercial arbitration, but we do insurance. We do construction, international, employment, and consumer, okay? And the two areas that we're criticized in are the employment and the consumer area. And I just wanted to briefly mention that. And, and why I want to mention that is because it, it kind of gives arbitration a bad name. And, and we kind of at AAA get upset about that because we feel like we're kind of the good guys. So does GM, CPR, and uh, other ADR providers because we don't write ourselves into contracts. People write us into contracts, okay? So we're written into millions of contracts every, every year. We, we, people are writing us into contracts all the time. We can't control that. And obviously in consumer contracts and employment contracts. And those two areas people have an issue with because it's a contract of adhesion, as all of us know on this call right now. And our position at AAA is, well, we have a due process protocol that we introduced in 1996 for employment and consumer later on. And the due process protocol is trying to level the playing field because most of our business is B2B, business to business. But in these two areas, uh, we get criticized, okay? And uh, there was a New York Times expose about three or four years ago about these two areas. But our position again is the fact that we don't write this, we don't write these contracts and we're put into these contracts, but we have these due process protocols that level the playing fields. And how do they do that? Well, employment, when I started at AAA a long time ago, uh, I started in 1990, I'm dating myself, okay, so I've been at the AAA for 30 years, but we didn't have the due process protocol. Uh, we didn't have employment arbitration uh, rules, and now we do, and what we do is we have this due process protocol that says, okay, now if, the, if, if you file a case with AAA, the employee has to have the right to select the arbitrator. They didn't have that before. They have to have the right to discovery. And, and a lot of other things, okay? So we level the playing, we tried to level the playing field in employment. And then in consumer, a couple of years ago, uh, we have, uh, you know, everyone has cell phones and we're written into a lot of cell phone contracts, like AT&T, I have an AT&T uh, cell phone um, and it calls for AAA. And what we have now is a registry where you have to sign up with the AAA uh, and if you're a company and, and uh, say that you're gonna meet these certain standards. And a lot of people don't know this, that we reject cases every year. Uh, about 350 cases we reject every year uh, if they don't meet these due process protocols. So again, I'm not you know, waving the AAA flag or jams or CPR, but we're trying to be the good guys. Uh, you know, we're trying to say, okay, let's level the playing field. Uh, and, and I think we are to some extent. So uh, AAA also, back to uh, our history, uh, in addition to cases, 
that I mentioned. We also do a lot of other things, uh, and we're a not-for-profit. We do publications, okay? We, we pub publicize, I mean, we do uh, the, the Dispute Resolution Journal, and we do uh, a lot of programs, a lot of educational programs, and we're a not-for-profit, and one of our goals is to educate people, not necessarily about the AAA. I know I have my little AAA logo behind me, but uh, I'm, I, I, when I go out and speak about uh, tr uh, ADR, it's not about AAA. It's more about, I think, the benefits of AAA. I mean, <laughs> I missed, that was a slip. the benefits of ADR. And I think all of you appreciate that. I mean, all of you in this committee appreciate uh, the benefits of ADR. Also, and probably a lot of you don't know this, uh, the AAA also does elections, actually ballot counting. And I was actually in that division at one point, the Labor, Employment, and Elections Division. And what that means is we do it for major, the police unions throughout the country, the teacher unions, New York City. Uh, the New York City ballots are all done by AAA. Uh, the Chicago teachers, uh, California, the LA teachers. And, and the reason they hire us uh, is because we're a neutral organization. And sometimes we get an arbitrator involved in that. Uh, an arbitrator has to make rulings on certain things. And the reason they hire us is because uh, we're a neutral organization. And we do about 300 elections per year. I mean, so that, that's a pretty big business uh, for uh, AAA. Where we're different in comparison to our competitors, and I said we're the largest, is because we can do uh, very large claims, okay? Very large uh, mass claims. And, and one example, and probably a lot of people on this uh, call today, or the Zoom call, uh, have done Storm Sandy claims, okay? We uh, can do those. Uh, AAA has a big staff. We, in 19, I think it was 2013 or 2012, we were able to mobilize uh, our staff and mobilize about 200 mediators to do about 6,000 cases. We did it in New York. We did it in New Jersey. We did this also for Storm Katrina, which was a few years before that. So uh, these are things that we do as a not-for-profit. We didn't make a lot of money on it. The mediators uh, didn't make a lot of money on it. They were making about, I think, three fifty dollars uh, per case. Uh, they were kind of volunteering their time, which is really awesome. And, and, and it was a really great uh, program. We're also, uh, right now, we're doing uh, bankruptcy cases uh, due to COVID, uh, eviction moratorium cases. So we're trying to do a lot of things to help the public. And the wonderful thing about this is a lot of our mediators and arbitrators agree to serve uh, and do these either pro bono or for a minimal fee. Because normally they may, they're making maybe $650, $800 an hour. Then they drop it down to, we drop it down to $350 negotiating with the state, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, and recently the, the uh, small claims court of, of New York contacted us uh, in, in the Southern District of New York. And we went, they didn't hire us, but they asked us to reach out to our mediators and see if what our mediators across the country okay, and this is for New York cases, would agree to do uh, these mediations, mandatory mediations, and there's a, a ton of our mediators agreed to do it uh, for free, uh, pro bono, which is really nice. Okay, so um, now moving on to COVID. When COVID hit in mid-March, uh, the AAA, I'm really proud of the AAA, and also JAMS, CPR, FINRA, we were able, all of us, the institutions, to mobilize so quickly, and we did. And within one week, uh, we have 600 employees at AAA, okay? We were able to mobilize our company uh, remote. 90% of us went remote. Uh, you know, again, I mentioned 26 offices, 18 states in Singapore. It was, uh, I couldn't believe it. I thought it would take a month to do that. And we never shut down. Jams never shut down. CPR didn't shut down. The courts had to shut down, and I get that. I mean, I, I understand that they're government institutions. Uh, we didn't shut down. We were, we were we had the luxury of not being able to shut down. And within a short period of time, our arbitrators and mediators really embraced the uh, the, the the virtual world. I, I was concerned. I thought there would be a generational gap. I mean, with me and, and other people, I, I didn't do a ton of Zoom calls like we're doing now. And now I do about, I would say, about uh, 20 a day. Um, so I wasn't that savvy with the technology, but it was surprising. Out of our, uh, you know, we have, you know, like I mentioned, uh, a lot of arbitrators on our panel, 6,000, and it wasn't, wasn't a problem. Okay, and it was really kind of neat uh, that they didn't have a problem with it. And my, my, my son's school is weird. People are worried about all the Zoom bombing, okay? And uh, my son's school, he's a, he's a, uh, a senior uh, at a school up the road from my house. 
and they were having Zoom bombing problems, okay, with the virtual stuff. And we didn't have any. And GMs didn't either. I talked to them. I talked to CPR. We're, we're all friends, if you guys know that. We're competitors, but we're all friends. And um, we didn't have Zoom bombing because, know why? It's not the technology. It's the individuals. It, it's the settings and all that kind of stuff. So what we did, AAA, GMs, CPR, FINRA, ICC, we all developed guidelines. And if you go on all of our web pages, you go on AAA webpage, you can see some terrific guidelines on these protocols, okay? And, and the protocols are terrific, okay? And we have one with respect to Zoom specifically on doing settings, okay? And that has helped tremendously. And with respect to my son's school, what I did was I sent those Zoom settings to uh, the, the school and I said, listen, you're having uh, some major Zoom problems. They have, they have not had one Zoom bombing since, okay? Because again, it's not, it's not AAA, it's, it's settings. It's, it's uh, doing the right thing uh, with these things. So we've been pretty uh, uh, darn comfortable with this uh, technology and we've been doing a lot of them, okay? We've done over a thousand Zoom hearings since uh, the pandemic and initially people were worried. People were concerned and saying, well, let's wait until the pandemic ends. Uh, let's wait a few months, uh, you know, and now, like I said, we've done over a thousand, okay, and there, there are arbitrators are embracing it, which is really great, okay, and we even had, which is kind of cool, and I know we have some judges on this call, uh, we don't want to, you know, take cases from the court system, but we want to be there to help. And uh, with respect to bankruptcy cases, uh, we approached a, a federal judge in a bankruptcy court that we knew uh, said that she was, uh, you know, overwhelmed. They just got back a couple months ago, and uh, they were they were shut down. We were not shut down, and uh, the court systems are limited, un unfortunately, to one system, one virtual platform. The uh, institutions are not. We can do any, uh, any platform and we do multiple platforms. So I talked to this judge and we said, listen, we can do this bankruptcy case, a very big case, over a billion dollars. And uh, they agreed to work with us. And they said, well, can you do it by the end of the year? And my response was, I can do it next week. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have uh, you know, a, a great amount of panelists that can do this, that want to do this. So we did. We did it a couple of weeks ago with uh, two co-mediators, one former bankruptcy judge and uh, one uh, uh, mediator from uh, Texas. And it was done over a five-day period, six parties, uh, 41 participants. So a lot of moving around in rooms but it worked, it was so, so effective. So we love the technology, it, it seems to be working, but where, what I'm concerned about, and I mentioned this, and if you were joined in early, you might've heard me uh, talking uh, to Elon about the future of this. Okay, with respect to hybrid, I think what's gonna happen now is we're gonna, when we start to come back, and I, I was back this week, uh, I'm in my home right now, but I was in my office earlier today, we had our first hybrid, uh, arbitration, okay, at my office. Uh, the only office out of our 26 offices to do the first hybrid since March, middle of March. And uh, it was the, the arbitrator and some other people and every, everyone else was uh, zoomed in and uh, you know, we did it at my office. So we're concerned about some of the really big cases and what we're doing at our office in Midtown and elsewhere, LA and some other places, we're putting cameras in the ceilings, uh, voice activated cameras where they can focus in on a person uh, and, and it'll be kind of like Zoom because we think this technology is pretty darn good. And we're hearing from a lot of our mediators and arbitrators that they can see the veracity of the witness. They can see the person sweating uh, better than in the room sometimes. If they're three or four seats away from the, the witness, sometimes they can't read that. Now with Zoom, they can. So our concern right now is hybrid. Okay, and, and, and trying to figure that out. And we are, I mean, we've had, I've had uh, many meetings uh, at AAA and I know JAMS has, uh, CPR and the other institutions are doing the same thing, trying to figure out how to reconfigure our rooms so we can have a hybrid hearing. And I get it, a lot of our arbitrators don't wanna go back until there's a vaccine. Okay, and, and I, I understand that. Uh, and it's, it, it's, you know, and the arbitrators are embracing the virtual world far more than counsel for, for clients. And it seems like the parties are now, uh, I mean, the counsel for parties are struggling with this. And uh, until they do it, until they try it out 
then they see it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> and we had a couple of major law firms in New York City that were fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. But then when they ended up doing it, they were like, wow, this is not bad. I mean, it actually is effective and you can actually do it. Uh, and according to our rules, GM's rules, CPR rules, uh, an arbitrator uh, can rule to say, we're going to go virtual, even if both parties don't want to go virtual. Uh, and, and I mean, don't, don't, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. And, and I've had several cases where this has happened, where both parties don't want to go virtual, but the arbitrator or arbitrators have ruled to go virtual. So, I mean, it's in our rules. Uh, so what's, what is it in the future? Um, I think it's, I, I think uh, in-person hearings are, are still going to happen, but what's going to, what we have now in the, uh, I, I, we call it the toolkit of the arbitrators and the mediators is this virtual stuff. We had it 10 years ago, and the technology wasn't as good as it is now. It really wasn't, but it was pretty darn good, but we weren't using it. Now I see our arbitrators all the time now at AAA, and our mediators, when they do a prelim conference, they're all using Zoom. They never did in the past. They always just did it by phone, and they're, we're, we're you know, doing Zoom. And at AAA, and I know Jams does this too, and I think CPR does too, we have uh, Zoom experts and virtual experts at our company to help out the arbitrators and the mediators, but they don't need much help because all of you know on this call right now, it's not that it's not that difficult. It's pretty intuitive. It's it's, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, so we hope that a lot of our arbitrators are embracing it, and they seem to be. But you know, I think going forward, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be used. I, I think it's gonna be used a lot. Uh, and I think uh, there's I was at a uh, law school today talking, and one of the questions was, well, how much is it gonna be used in the future? And I go. Well, I think what's going to happen is people that were doing international arbitrations, clients are going to say, wow, during the pandemic, and now we're into seven months, we're going to probably go another seven months, who knows? Uh, they're saying, wow, I saved a lot of money. I saved a ton of money. And they're going to say this to the attorneys. Uh, why are we going in person now? Why are we flying to New York? Why are we flying to LA? Why don't we just do it virtual? Also, I think, and I, and I was talking to India Johnson, our president, about this the other day, is when uh, you know when we get back to normal, when there's a winter storm, when someone's sick or whatever, it's not going to be unusual or strange for someone to suggest let's go virtual. In the past, it would have been. I would have scratched my head, like really, or, you know, come on. I mean, but now it's kind of there. Everyone is getting used to it, which is good. Uh, and again, we've done uh, you know over a thousand cases uh, uh, virtual, and I know the other institutions have done the same. And now the court systems are you know up and running, and, and they're doing it a lot too, which is which is terrific. So that's my my uh, little uh, issue. I mean, that's my little, little summary of uh, the AAA, and also about uh, you know what we've been doing since COVID. So I'm going to, unless I have any questions, I'm going to turn to the next question. Elon, so I look to see if there's any questions before I turn to the next question. I haven't got anything in the chat yet. So, uh, you know, I think you'd gone to the next thing. Just wanted to very quickly point out well, a lot of the efficiencies, Jeff, that you were discussing before. There was a great article by uh, Sidney Kanazawa, who's a, a mediator. Uh, he wrote for Law 360, and he goes into a, a lot of depth that I just uh, sent it around to everybody. So uh, that's just an additional point. But it, I, I don't see anything else in the chat. So uh, go on to the next question. Great, great. The next question is uh, your knowledge of arbitration opportunities in the New York area useful for building arbitration experience. I'll even include mediation experience uh, because uh, one of the big programs that we did, and I mentioned it already, was Storm Sandy back in 2013, Katrina uh, down south. Uh, and that's where AAA, we enlist people. And I remember in 2013, uh, my role at AAA, uh, being the uh, head of the uh, commercial division in New York, was to enlist people, to enlist mediators. And I enlisted uh, 200 people. They didn't end up on our, not all of them ended up on our panel, but we did enlist them and they, they were signed up to our panel initially and they handled these cases. And we, like I said, we did 6,000 uh, storm sanding cases. Down south, we did Katrina cases. So when these things happen, you know, you know unfortunately, obviously we don't want these bad things to happen, okay? But they're going to, and we look at what, what we're going through right now. But when they happen, AAA does mass claims. So just remember that and, and, and contact AAA uh, when there is a mass claim kind of a situation. If you're not already on our panel, uh, we are looking for people. I mean, I remember um, I was part of the ADR committee of the New York City Bar and I, my whole committee signed up 
And I was really grateful that they did. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have these situations in the future. And, uh, you know, if you want it, and that's a good way to potentially get on Triple X panel. What we do is we sign you up for these programs, these mass clean programs, and then potentially you will uh, maybe get on Triple X panel if, if we need somebody in, in your a certain area. Also, uh, I want to mention FINRA. If you're not already on FINRA panel, FINRA is always looking for uh, panelists, and, and we have a number of people that are on AAA's panel that are on FINRA's panel. They have a pretty robust uh, application process. Uh, and I'm not, you know, probably there's somebody, uh, probably a number of people in this group that are on FINRA's panel. They have a robust, uh, you know, application process, but uh, they're a great organization, uh, and I would consider using them. AAA also right now is doing civil commotion, uh, you know, the civil unrest cases, uh, we're doing those. Uh, and we enlisted a number of people, not a lot, because we think what happened in New York is probably, we're looking at about 500 cases. But when uh, civil unrest happened in New York, uh, you know, uh, uh, the state of New York contacted us and wanted us to handle those cases. And a lot of people say, well, are those cases against the people that were looting or, or no, it, it's, it's the insurance company versus the insurer. <laughs> and, and that's what those cases are, sort of like Storm Sandy. So we have that program up and running right now. And so if people are, have expertise in that area, please uh, you know, contact AAA. I mean, these are mass claims uh, that we do. Also, um, and I mentioned this, the small claims court, uh, contact them. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in doing mediations, okay, these are mediations, not arbitrations. Uh, they have a mandatory mediation program and they reached out to AAA and I reached out to all of our mediators across the country. And I had a lot of people that volunteered and that helps. That really, really does help with uh, your resume and, and, and uh, people look at that. And, I, and I, like I mentioned, Storm Sandy, I have a lot of people that jumped on our panel for Storm Sandy and then eventually got on our mediation panel or our, our AAA's arbitration panel because they helped us out a lot. And I, I know we have people here uh, that uh, have done a lot of Storm Sandy. I mean, some people have done like 40 Storm Sandy cases. Um, also, I want to mention, uh, it's a plug, <laughs> uh, for AAA mediation.org, AAA mediation.org. Okay, and that's a, a website. It's also a think tank. It's part of AAA. And it's a website that you can, if you're not on the AAA's panel, you can sign up for that. It's a, it's a really minimal fee. I forget what it is, but I know it's under, I know it's under uh, three or 400 bucks uh, where you can sign up, have your photo there, your background, and it'll say you're not affiliated with AAA yet, but you're part, you know, you're part of AAA mediation.org. And that site has hit a lot. People go there and we give you the metrics. So if you're, you know, if you want to go on that site, I would take a look at it. And we get a lot of people that, uh, you know, may not eventually be on AAA site. I'll give you an example, like uh, people that do divorce law, uh, that kind of stuff, or divorce mediators. We don't do that at AAA, but they end up on our AAA mediation.org site because they feel like they can get some good, uh, you know, promotion there. And, and we do, we promote it. So take a look at that. It's, it's kind of a neat site, okay? So I'll move on to the final question. I'll look and see if there's any questions here. Okay. I don't see any. Okay, so I'll move no, on. Jeff, to Jeff hang on. We get, we're about to get another one uh, from Angelina Serrano. She just uh, sent me this one privately, and I just relate it. What, if any, requirements are there to get on the AAA panel? And what, if any, arbitration opportunities are there for bilingual arbitrators? Oh, okay. Great question. And that's my next thing that I was going into. Um, this is the, the question. So I'll... I'll uh, put this on top of it. The steps for joining the AAA's arbitration and mediation panel rosters and mediation uh, of neutrals, as well as what AAA is looking for in prospective arbitrators and mediators. Okay, so that's kind of what you're asking. Uh, we have, uh, in 1990, uh, we had 56,000 people on our panel. 56,000, not, uh, you know, 5,600, 56,000. So when I started at AAA, we had that many. In the 90s, we did a major purge and weeded down our panel to 6,000. And that's what we currently have, 6,000, which is pretty massive in comparison to our competitors. Uh, I think JAMS has about 350. Uh, we have 6,000, okay? Because we do, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty big. We do a lot of cases around the country. Okay, so in, 19, in the 1990s, it was more like a membership thing. And we got away from that. So we made certain requirements. So now to get on the AAA's panel, it varies by the area of law. 
but most areas, my area, I do commercial. I can talk about the other areas too. My area, you need a minimum of 15 years of experience in your area of practice, okay? And mostly in my area of commercial, it's lawyers. You have to be a lawyer, okay? I would say 98% of my panel in commercial are lawyers. You look at construction, that number drops down to probably to about 90%, okay? Because you have engineers and architects, okay? So you have to have 15 years, okay? And the question we ask is, you know, we need, you know, are you well known in the community? Uh, and unlike some of our competitors, we don't require that you have arbitration experience as an arbitrator. We just want to know that you have experience as an advocate. I don't want people applying to our panel, uh, our, our commercial panel, and I'm just talking about our commercial panel, I'll move to our employment panel, our labor panel. I don't want them applying if they have no arbitration experience. And when I say no arbitration or mediation experience, that means they've never done an arbitration or a mediation uh, as an advocate. Now, I have plenty of people that apply to our panel, uh, that get on our panel that have tons and tons of experience as an advocate. And they're great. I mean, those are the kind of people we want. They've taken some training courses uh, through the New York State Bar, through other organizations. And we don't, you know, you know, we don't actually train uh, people to be arbitrators. Uh, once you get on our panel, accept it, we do a two-day training. And it's not training to be an arbitrator. It's just basically saying these are our, our expectations. We're going to help you with your resume. And we kind of have had a dialogue with the new arbitrator. But we're looking for people that have a lot of industry experience. And I, like I said, I've been at the company for uh, 30 years. And when I first started off at AAA, we would take people that had you know, general experience, general practitioner. What we're looking for now is people that have a lot of industry experience as a lawyer, okay, in certain areas, insurance, healthcare, uh, because that's what our clients are asking for. And we're seeing that. And, and, and what I do, my team in Mid, Mid, Midtown Manhattan, we do the high end cases, the 5 million and up. And we got on calls with the clients uh, and before we even appoint an arbitrator, we spend time with them and ask them, what do you want? What, what are you looking for? And uh, they go into details and that wasn't true in the past. And they're looking for specific things. And so, uh, you know, to answer that question uh, and to answer the question that was uh, posed to me, uh, you know, before this program, um, you, know, you know, 15 years, people that have a lot of experience in certain areas and you're, you're known in the community. Uh, I don't want to create expectations and I don't want to put someone on the panel that, you know, you know we put you on the panel and, you, you know, nobody knows who you are, okay, in, in the community. And that's important. And, and, and we look at that. And what we do in, in, in New York for the New York panel is we usually meet with the person directly. Uh, my, my, my colleague, Monzi Carroll, uh, who is my uh, director of ADR services, we'll meet with, for coffee. We used to, pre-pandemic. Uh, now we do it virtual. We do a virtual coffee. Um, and we only let on our panel probably about, I would say, anywhere between eight to 10 people a year uh, now. Uh, and uh, we have in, in New York, we have a panel of 400 people. So it's a very, very, very competitive market. And, uh, you know, we only, you know, we're looking at people that we need. So sometimes people apply and they're, they're terrific. They're like, they have so much healthcare expert uh, expertise. And then I look at our panel and I say, well, we have, we already have a certain percentage of people that already cover that area. So let's hold off on this person for now. And, have him or her apply a little bit later on. So when we get an application, I get probably honestly two to three a week. Okay, <laughs> two to three a week. People uh, are uh, trying to apply to uh, AAA's panel, and you know, uh, my my colleague and I will look at it. We'll talk to our panel relations team in Dallas, and we'll we'll say, okay, does New York need another person in this area of law? Does this person meet the requirements? And also, you know, we're obviously very sensitive about diversity. And, and uh, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, our panel is 26% diverse. And, you know, that, that, that's an important thing that we take into consideration also. But it's, it's more, uh, it really is more, it, it, does the person have the qualifications uh, that we're looking for in certain areas of law? For example, financial services uh, became a big area for my company about a year ago. Uh, our, our caseload increased by 50 or 70% over a one year period. So we were looking for people. We weren't, we never recruit. And I'll tell you that, we don't recruit. Uh, some organizations I think recruit, we don't. What we do is we just look at the applicants that are coming in and trust me, we can find someone that, that meets that expertise. So that's 
pretty important. So, uh, you know, uh, if you're considering uh, applying to AAA, you know, look at your background, see, you know, if you have a certain expertise. And I always say, you know, are you pretty well known in the community? Because we don't want to start listing somebody that, that, that is not. Now for employment, and I mentioned that was commercial, for employment and labor, for the, the folks that are uh, here today that are do employment and labor, it's different. For labor, unfortunately, and it's kind of uh, interesting, you, you cannot be working for a union or management or, or be representing a union or management in a firm. You have to be, uh, you, you have to be neutral. And so it, it eliminates a lot of really good candidates. And we're hoping someday that it changes, but that's what the National Academy of Arbitrators wants. That's what a lot of people are saying that's a good thing. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. But right now, uh, you have to be a neutral. So you cannot apply for AAA's panel to be on our labor panel unless you're neutral. You're not working for a union firm or a management firm. Employment, and then this, this makes it a little bit challenging too, and I have a lot of great people that uh, could potentially be on our employment panel, but they have to have 50% or around 50% of, of experience in employment matters as a general counsel or as an you know, in, in-house or uh, as a lawyer. Uh, so that's a, that's a hurdle for some people. So those, th those are some higher standards that they have to apply for. So, I mean, just consider that if you're in the labor and employment area. And, you know, again, uh, it's a competitive market. Our market is so competitive, which I love. I mean, I, I think I have, and, and, and I brag about this to my fellow colleagues at AAA. Don't tell them I said this, but I have the best arbitrators and mediators in the country. I really do. I mean, we, we, New York is stellar. It really is. And uh, I, even when I was in labor and employment, now I'm in commercial, we have a phenomenal, the best, the, the, the brightest, the best, and it's competitive. I mean, my God. I mean, I, I, I have 400 people on my panel uh, just in New York. My district is New York only. And my colleagues in the international, they represent the world and they have 600 people on their panel. So that just tells you a little bit about the New York market, how uh, ADR friendly it is, but competitive. Uh, and so if you get on a panel, you get on a FINRA panel or a AAA panel, a CPR, don't be discouraged that it takes a little time to get some cases. And, and I tell that to all of our new arbitrators. It, it, it's, it, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon and just take your time and we try to help you out and we do. But again, uh, we're pretty selective. I mean, right now, I mean, we, we weren't in the nineties and we became very, very selective because when I started off at AAA, uh, when I generated a list, uh, I hated to hear a client call me up and saying, uh, why the heck did you put this person on this list? He, he or she doesn't have these qualifications. So these are the things that we really, really focus on now. And, 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 and you got to think about that too, as a uh, arbitrator or mediator about, you know, your, your resume, your social media presence, all that kind of stuff. It's being looked at big time uh, now. And, and we do, even though, let's say if you're on the AAA's panel as an arbitrator or a mediator, when I sit down with my team, to generate a list of 15 for a, a big case or 10 for a smaller case, uh, we meet and we even beyond, we go beyond the resume that we have at the AAA. We look on, on social media, we look on your LinkedIn page, we look on your web pages, and it, you know, we see, you know, do you meet these qualifications for this case? We take it seriously because know why? The clients are taking it seriously and we hear it. Uh, the calls that I said that I mentioned that when I get on a call with some of our clients, it sometimes is a 30 minute to an hour call about what are the qualifications of this arbitrator and mediator that, that we want in this case. Then I get off the call, I meet with my team in Manhattan and we sit down and we talk about who would be the best person for this case. And then we generate the list. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, you know, uh, you know I mean, I'm sorry, it's a long winded uh, thing of explaining, uh, you know, how, how you get on the AAA panel, but it's, 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 it's difficult. Uh, it's a challenging, but uh, again, we uh, accept about in New York, about uh, eight to 10 people a year. Uh, and you have to have certain requirements and, and, and it's online. If you can go, go on our webpage, you'll see, uh, I mentioned a couple of the things that we, that AAA requires, but there's a lot of things there. There's other things there that we uh, require too. But the one cool thing that we don't require is that you have arbitrated a case as an arbitrator or mediated a case as a mediator. So just remember that that's uh, kind of uh, you know, a, a difference I think that uh, AAA is. So 
Elon, do I do I have more time, or do you want me to look to the? Have, yeah, yeah, you have a ton of more time. You well, let's just uh, take a break just uh, to recap some of the stuff. I think uh, you, you mentioned before we can amplify, but some of the questions. So I want to go back to uh, two questions from Janice Sparrow, who uh, is actually an arbitrator from California. So now uh, we're, we're uh, trans coast as, as well. Thank you, Janice. Uh, her first question is, what's the uh, attrition rate? I think she meant that generally with respect to the panels. Uh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. That's a good, that's a great question. Uh, and that's something I would have to get back to you uh, about. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't have the stats on that. And I, I would hate to, you know, uh, just go off the top of my head and say, oh, here's the attrition rate. I, I, I don't know, right, at this point. Yeah, I, but uh, that's a good question. But I, I can get, I can get back to the group and Elon, I can email you. I can, I can, we have a stats department actually at AAA that keeps the stats and all that kind of stuff. And that's one area that I, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but I can, I can get back to you on that. Okay, so that's uh, certainly to follow up on. And then also her other question was, given the pandemic and Zoom, why are hearings, uh, I guess, still slated regionally? They're not, um, they're, actually they're not. And that's a great question because I've been saying now to, uh, uh, my team in Manhattan only does the high end cases. And what we say to clients now is when we get on a call with them before the arbiters are appointed, we say, do you realize that we may not be going to in-person hearings in the near future? And uh, therefore, would you accept virtual hearings? And they, they say, sure, both sides say it. And then I say, okay, in light of that, would you accept me to generate a panel, uh, not generate a panel, generate a list of arbitrators that are expertise, or have the expertise that you need throughout the country, throughout the world? And they're saying yes, which is Great. And so what I've been doing, a couple of my cases recently, really big high-end cases, we've been doing that. We've been saying, okay, we're going to get people from around the country. And I've been telling new arbitrators that get on our panel, now you have an opportunity. Now you have an opportunity. You're not just limited to, like some people, like New York's a great area. I mean, there's so much, so many cases. But arbitrators that are in, in the South and certain areas of the country, it's not a lot of cases. Okay, there's not like it is in New York. And so now they have now an opportunity to, to do New York cases. But uh, to answer your question, we're not limiting and, and we're telling, we're asking the clients, do you want to go beyond, like normally I'll generate a list of just re New York region, that's it. Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, and that's it. Now I'm going beyond it, I really am. Okay, great uh, answer then. It's always good to see uh, the expansion. Uh, we have two questions I'm going to dovetail together because uh, even though they're from different levels of experience, they are sort of related with respect to experience. So the first one is from Joanna Conzior. Uh, uh, does the AAA panel offer, uh, I guess the AAA, I don't know if the individual panels do, but maybe they do. Does AAA offer internships for law students? That's the first question. And the related one from Frank, Frank Prosha is, I just finished BMT mediation training New York Peace Institute and plan to do their apprenticeship. Is there another good way to get experience as a new mediator, which the implication there would be a mediation internship. So uh, does AAA offer arbitration and or mediation internships or apprenticeship? Uh, we offer internships uh, usually through uh, ICDR has some of uh, the international division of our branch uh, offers internships. Our marketing department does, various departments do but it just depends on what they need. Uh, my commercial division hasn't had an internship for a while, but uh, you know, we do, we, I mean, we do. And most of them, uh, some of them are paid, some of them are unpaid. Um, and we had a, uh, an intern at our office for about a year in my Midtown office where what she was doing was reviewing awards and th seeing trends in various uh, international awards. So we do, I mean, and uh, yeah, please, I mean, uh, apply. Uh, you, know, send, you can send me your resume, I'll put my email on here. And what I'll do is I send it to, usually when I get these, I get, I get these requests every week or every couple of weeks, I send it to our human resources department and they store it in, in a certain database or when a department, a division needs an intern. But yes, to answer your question, we definitely do. Uh, with respect to the mediation question, uh, is, was that an intern as a, uh, like a, a shadowing a mediator? Is that, was that, was that I think question? it was more like an, an apprenticeship also. It would fall into that category, friend. I mean, what we do at AAA is uh, if someone wants to do that, um, usually it has to be someone that's already on our panel, that's new to our panel. We'll say, okay, you can, we'll hook you up with someone that can be your mentor. You'll be the mentee. 
Uh, we don't usually take uh, general calls from the public. Uh, we have the Higginbotham program for uh, diverse people, I mean, uh, which we do every, every other year. And we have a, a diversity program where we have a mentorship program there. Uh, but, you know, that said, I mean, you could call, you know, uh, the local office, my office, and that, say, hey, listen, I would love to see a mediation, love to see an arbitration. Uh, we, we try to help you. I mean, you know, we do that all the time. I mean, it's not, it's not that difficult. The only, pro the, only, the only problem is, is getting the parties to agree to allow you in the room. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only problem. But, uh, you know, uh, and I've had some problems, especially with some controversy, you know, some high profile cases. They don't want, uh, you know, somebody uh, in the room. You have to sign various, uh, you know, uh, confidentiality agreements. But we do. But it's, it's, it's more for people that are already on our panel, that are new to our panel, and also uh, the Higginbotham program. Uh, just a reminder from Cynthia Boyce, she actually uh, pointed me to a question she asked earlier. I just want to go back to this. So you were talking about mass claims um, yes. and you know, bringing your uh, arbitrators uh, sort of ad hoc in, in for that. Her question is, how do we learn when you are doing mass claims so that we can sign up? Good question. Um, well, I mean, uh, look at our webpage. Uh, you know, monitor our webpage because we're really good about uh, you know, telling the public about what we're doing. And you'll see, if you go on our webpage tonight, ADR.org, you'll see our bankruptcy program. You'll see our, uh, you know, the eviction program. Uh, you'll see that in our banners. And if you see that something in, our, in, our, in one of our banners, our sliding banners, call us, call me or, 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 or email me. And uh, that's what happened during Storm Sandy. When Storm Sandy happened, uh, we had a, a banner ad about you know, meeting individuals that could do these kind of claims at a reduced rate. And uh, like, again, I recruited about 200 people and it was not hard. <laughs> it was really, really uh, quite uh, simple to do that. And, and they were great. I mean, they really were great. And like I said, a good percentage of them ended up on our panel. Uh, I guess we saw that they were really terrific in handling these cases, but just monitor our webpage. Uh, we don't, you know, and, and look at, you know, what the state's doing. I mean, usually these programs come from the federal government or the state and, and, and we're higher AAA. Uh, I'm proud of this because we're a not-for-profit and they know that, you know, uh, you know, we're, you know, you know not-for-profit and we will we'll do a great job. And we've done a lot of these mass claims uh, over uh, 30, 40 years. So yeah, definitely monitor our webpage. Thank you very much. We have a, two quick questions of clarification. I'm just going to join them up with Lisa Askenazi since she basically, uh, I think, it also dovetails with Cheryl Anstasto's question. Do you say that AAA takes divorce and family mediations or no? And I believe uh, Cheryl had a Cheryl Ann had a similar question as well. Yeah, we, we don't. <laughs> um, and actually, we had when I started at AAA, uh, we had uh, family law uh, the mediation rules. And um, I remember seeing those and I was like, wow, this is interesting. And, and we, we, we don't, it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of a, a difficult area for us to get involved in. Um, but are we considering it? And I've been talked to by a lot of people in the ABA, the New York State Bar Association, New York City Bar Association saying, you guys really vet your mediators uh, uh, and you guys would be a great uh, organization to vet people for a panel to do these kind of cases because a lot of people are just hanging their shingle and saying they're, they, they can do uh, divorce mediations and, and they're really not qualified. Uh, and, and so our response to that is we do mediation training, uh, but we don't, we don't handle the cases. Um, but, you know, have we looked into it? Have we continued to? Yeah, we are. But right now, no, we don't, we don't touch family law. And, uh, you know, some of our, my colleagues are happy that we don't, we don't want the, you know, people running around the hallways crying and all this kind of, kind of stuff, uh, you know, but we do see that. We do see uh, business divorces and we see people you know, yelling at each other and, and stuff like that in our hallways. But um, no, we, we don't, uh, but we might in the future, uh, you know, we might, uh, but mediation obviously uh, for uh, family stuff. Thank you very much. We also have another quick question of clarification from Diane O'Connell. If you are a AAA arbitrator, can you just join the mediation roster? Yes. I mean, if you're a AAA arbitrator, can you join the mediation panel? Yeah, in other words, it's, it, once you have standing as a, as a AAA panelist, do you get automatically grandfathered into a mediation roster? No, unless you take training. You have to do, uh, we require that you do the 40 hour training, like, like the state. The state requires that, uh, the state of New York, other states require that for you to get on the, you know, their, their uh, roster. Uh, we require a 40 hour training 
and then we require that you have some mediation experience as an advocate or as a mediator. Um, and it's, it's completely different skills sets, as, as, as everyone probably knows. And a lot of arbitrators uh, don't make great mediators. <laughs> but uh, we, do we have a lot of our arbitrators that are both arbitrators and mediators? Yeah, I would say about, I would say about 30% of our roster in New York are both arbitrators and mediators. And, and, and they're darn good at both. Uh, but yeah, again, you have to take that training. And, and it, it doesn't have to be through AAA. We provide it. And we're not like seeking people to take our training courses. You can take it through the New York State Bar Association, New York City Bar. Yeah, there's so many programs, ABA. Uh, but yeah, you, you have to take a 40 hour training and then and contact AAA if you're already on it. And just so that when you, when you say the 40 hour training, just uh, for the people who've done it before, do you mean the 40 hour, 24 basic, and 16 and specialized? Or do you, okay. Yeah. Yep, it's, that's, it's, that's, it's basically the equivalent of part 146, is whatever the part 146 requirements. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So for everybody who's uh, was interested in that, if you fulfill your part 146 requirements, you've uh, you fulfilled that as well. So the people who are asking about divorce mediation, what else? Your 16 hours and your specialization will uh, will count for that. Uh, okay. Um, we have another question here from uh, Angelina Serrano. Uh, can you explain what you meant by labor employment arbitration need 50% experience in labor and employment? And another question, how many years do labor and employment arbitrators need as advocates in labor and employment to be considered for the panel? 15 years? Good question, okay. Uh, actually, to add, commercial's different. Commercial's 15 years, labor and employment's 10. But again, labor and employment's, you gotta separate them, okay? So labor, you have to be neutral. <laughs> you can't be working for a union firm or a management firm. You have to be uh, independent, okay? And that's, that's when you apply. So that's kind of hard. And we see that with people that, you know, a lot of the people that apply to our panel have a, a significant other that can support them <laughs> when they're doing this, uh, you know, career change. Uh, you know, they're not working for a labor or a management firm and they have to do that. So that's labor. That's a separate area. It's 10, you know, it's, it's 10 years and you have to get uh, references from three management, three union, and three labor uh, labor arbitrators. Okay, so you need those nine references. So it's yeah, that's not that difficult. But I mean, uh, a lot of you if you're in the in the area of, uh, of labor, employment is different different animal. Uh, you have to have fifty percent experience uh, as a, you know in your law firm doing employment stuff or in house counsel doing employment stuff. Do we hold you at that fifty percent? Not necessarily. I mean, if you had let's say forty percent and you you're a stellar candidate. We're going to accept you, but our, 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 we say online that AAA is 50%, and it's, it's a 10-year experience. It's not the 15 years that we, that we require in commercial. Okay. Uh, some additional follow-up from Ariel Boberman on uh, employment. Do you need a law degree to do employment? Uh, yes. Uh, not, not labor, but employment, yes. Good okay. question. Um, and then uh, now switching gears a little bit, I, I don't know if you maybe want to take this after the next segment, but the, as far as I can see, the last question that we have, I think we're all caught up now, is from Spence Packer. What are the requirements to become a New York no-fault insurance arbitrator? Great question. Um, it's it's uh, not up to me or AAA. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this, that we do a big part of our caseload is the no fault stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's huge in New York. I mean, we're doing about two hundred thousand cases of no fault in New York. So when I say that three hundred thousand number, uh, a lot of it's no fault insurance in New York, and they've been our client for uh, for thirty years. And that's the state of New York. They select the people. Okay, so what it is is I don't know what the requirements are, but you have to go through the state of New York. Okay. And AAA is a member of the panel that sits there and reviews the applicants, uh, but we have no vote, okay? It's only the state of New York that votes and decides who's gonna be on that panel, our panel, okay? And once they get on our panel, uh, we provide them with a laptop, uh, we provide them with a scheduling system, all that stuff. We, we're their case manager in a sense, uh, but we, do, we have nothing to do with respect to uh, you know, selecting those candidates. That's something that the New York State uh, does. So you might want to, uh, the, the Department of Financial Services, you might want to go into their webpage, 
and that's the, the, the group that hired AAA, and look at what their requirements are. I think they're there. Uh, but again, we have no vote on that. It's, 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 uh, we're just a, a client of the state of New York for those uh, cases. And with that, I believe we are all caught up. So uh, Jeff, if you want to go to your next question uh, to start up your next speaking segment, go right ahead. I, I don't have, an, I have those three questions, but I do want to mention, uh, here's what I mentioned which I think the crowd might find interesting, and I've talked about this in, 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 with other groups. Uh, has anyone heard of the, uh, the Jay-Z case, Jay-Z arbitration case? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, so that was my case. And, uh, you know, I, I say this all the time. I'm the original Jay-Z. You know, I was born before he was. Uh, but I want to mention that, that case because uh, they got it, the media got it wrong. And when I say that is uh, that case, I'm not sure if you, if you don't know about it, uh, Jay-Z, the rapper, uh, the case was filed against him, uh, a Connex brand, his former brand, filed a case against Jay-Z uh, for uh, trademark issues. And it was a AAA arbitration case. And we put together a list. The list was 50% or more diverse, okay? And uh, the firm came back and said, uh, and I could talk about this because it went to court. The firm came back and said, well, uh, yeah, it's 50% diverse or more, but we want an African-American male in this case. Okay. And so that was interesting for AAA to, to, to encounter this. So, you know, our, our position was, well, okay, okay, you, you, you know, what does the other side want? It's the party's process. They ended up filing for a temporary restraining order uh, against uh, AAA, or not, against us proceeding, and it was granted. And the reason it was granted wasn't because uh, the court system believed in their argument. It was granted because uh, the court system, the, the judge that was assigned the case, his wife passed away. And there was another judge assigned to this case. And she uh, you know, took on the case and granted the TRO because she just wanted to wait until he got back. But when she granted the TRO, she kind of, you know, this is all on the record, she you know, kind of said, I can't believe this, this argument. And you're saying that I can't, as a white female, hear this case. <laughs> so, so she made that argument. Uh, and and, and that's on the record. But anyways, the TRO was granted. Then the media took this and ran with it and got it wrong. And I, I, I don't like to quote uh, you know, our president, but it was fake news. It was, it was definitely fake news uh, at that time. And we were like, oh, my God. I mean, uh, you know, the TRO was only granted because of the judge's wife passing away and AAA uh, you know, has done a lot for diversity, and we were kind of uh, upset about it. And, and I have too, in, in New York especially. And we were kind of annoyed by the fact that uh, you know people were saying in the media that AAA uh, you know is 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 not diverse in our panel. And yeah, we have a long way to go. I mean, we're at, like I mentioned 25 percent diverse, but we're trying. I mean, it's a societal issue. It's not a AAA jams CPR FINRA issue. It's a societal issue, law school issue, people going to law school. And uh, that case ended up settling, uh, you know, thank God. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it hit the press and the press got it wrong. And, and it really annoyed me. It really annoyed me when my 20-year-old my, uh, son you know, texted me and said, Dad, what's going on? You know, the AAA doesn't have any African-American males on your panel. I'm like, no, we have, we have plenty. We have, uh, you, know, you know, a lot. Do we want more? Absolutely. Uh, so that was a really interesting case. I would you know, look that up if you're interested in that. Uh, but we do at AAA uh, really care about that issue. And uh, our panel, uh, like I mentioned, is 25% diverse. And what we do now on all of our lists that go out since I think 2013, 2014, has to be 20% diverse. And in 2019, we met that. Uh, we, we had 98% of our cases that went out uh, were 20% diverse, if not more. So that, that was an interesting, uh, really interesting case uh, yeah, uh, you know, that, that we came across at AAA. That's really interesting case. Actually, there's a follow-up question directly on that point from uh, Cynthia. Um, and we'll get back to you, Anthony. I see your, your question as well, but this is uh, directly on topic. So now we're going to go to that first. Uh, how does AAA define uh, diverse? And I'll, I'll just say from my perspective as, a, as an Orthodox Jew, does that in, the definition include religion as well? as um, racial or ethnic characteristics? Great, great question, because I get asked that all the time. And I was asked that on a case recently, uh, where yeah, just recently, a, a month ago, uh, race and gender, uh, you know, uh, and right now that's it. Okay, race and gender. 
And I even had a client say to me, well, you know, uh, really uh, gender? Uh, you know, we, we thought it should just only be race. Uh, and we don't, we're, this year we're looking into LGBTQ, uh, you know, uh, qualification too. We're, we're, we're considering that and then we're going to probably do that. But right now it's just race and gender at, at AAA. And uh, yeah, there's been some issues about that. And since the Jay-Z case, I've had uh, cases uh, that I know of that I'm actually handling where the clients have come to us and said, one client, uh, you know, we want all uh, African-American males. We want all Asian-American females, or we want all females. And my position on that and AAA's position is, sure, we'll do that. If you want that, we have that on our panel, but does the other side agree? <laughs> so, so if the other side doesn't agree, we can't do that. Okay. So uh, that, this is, that's just not fair. So we'll give you our divert. We'll make sure the list is diverse. So we're seeing that. And that's the Jay-Z effect. Uh, we're seeing that right now. Uh, and uh, I, I get it, but is that fair to the other side? You got to say, you know, you got to talk to the other side. So this one case I had was uh, really worked out well, uh, where one side wanted, uh, like the Jay-Z case, and they quoted the Jay-Z case, uh, you know, an African-American male to hear this case. It, it involved an African-American male executive in a major company, a very wealthy man, and he wanted uh, uh, that type of person to hear the case. And we had a call with the other side, and they ended up agreeing to, to put together, each side put together their own list, gave it a triple A, I put together a, a diverse list to uh, a, a mixture of uh, you know, qualified people, and we came up with somebody. So we're trying to address that issue, but my, again, my answer always is, if both sides agree, uh, if you want a bald white male like me, you'll, you'll get it. <laughs> but if, you know, it, but it, if both sides agree on that, but otherwise uh, you're gonna get a, a diverse list that we think are people that are qualified to hear this case. A great response. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back now to Anthony because I promised I was going to do so. I always like to keep my word. So uh, he writes, hi, great presentation. I'm an avid mediator in Colorado, not a lawyer, and not too interested in uh, getting into arbitration. What opportunities are there for me with AAA for a non-lawyer? Sure. Uh, uh, non-lawyer? Is he a non-lawyer, you said? Yes, not a lawyer. Okay, not a lawyer. Okay. I mean, I think, uh, you know, there are opportunities in mediation, mediation or arbitration also for non-lawyers. If you have a specific field, like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, like architects, engineers, accountants, uh, if you have some specific area that you're really experienced, but not so much in mediation. If you're, if you're a darn good mediator and people know that in the community, great. I mean, uh, that, 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 that's wonderful. Uh, so there are opportunities for non-attorneys, but again, the majority of our people on our panel our attorneys, uh, in both mediation and arbitration, because guess what? The people that are selecting you guys are attorneys. And, and so they're looking for someone that has a legal background to some extent. But again, we have cases uh, like Storm Sandy. Uh, we again, again, necessarily don't necessarily involve you know, a lot of legal issues. We have uh, other cases, caseloads that are involved uh, construction and all that kind of stuff where you really want a lawyer? Wouldn't you want an architect or an engineer or a specific field? So, I mean, there, there are opportunities, but, but it's not uh, huge opportunities. Uh, but uh, for Colorado, uh, I, I would suggest contacting my, my, my good colleague, uh, Lance Tanaka, <laughs> uh, who is uh, the, the equivalent of me, but in Colorado. Lance Tanaka is his is name. Okay, thank you for that information. And actually we now have a request for additional information um, can you please send the link for the applications requirements for the mediation panels and Cynthia, that's from Holly and Cynthia also asks, what are the requirements to join the mediation panels? Great question. Uh, and I don't have to send it because all you have to do is go on to, uh, ADR.org, our webpage, and you'll see you just, there's the, up on the top, you just go you know, qualifications for AAA's panel. And there is a, a nice PDF you can download, uh, of the qualifications for mediators and for arbitrators. It's, it's, it's all there. And if you can't find it, email me. Uh, but it, it is there. It's on our webpage, our, our qualifications uh, for mediators and arbitrators. I just put that in the chat. It's www.adr.org. Um, so you can go there and, uh, and download and find the, uh, the documents uh, that you would have. Um, okay. There was, I think, one other. Now that was, we already got to that. Okay. So now I'm going to actually just ask you a, a question that I had. And I'm just not going to take the time to put it out. 
Uh, what percentage of cases are decided by solo arbitrators? You can answer this across all the panels if you know, if not, just do it based on your commercial experience. Sure. What percentage of cases are decided by solo arbitrators? What percentage by uh, three arbitrator panels? And have there been any other cases where you've gone beyond three arbitrators on a panel? Great question. Okay, so the majority are decided by sole arbitrators because unless the contract is state specifically for three arbitrators, we don't appoint three arbitrators to a case unless uh, it's uh, uh, half a million and up. Okay, if, 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 if let's say the contract is silent, we will go ahead and appoint three arbitrators. Uh, I think that number should go up. We're all New Yorkers on this call. I think a, a half a million is not a lot of money. It's a lot of money to me personally, but not a lot of money for an arbitration. So I think uh, you know three arbitrators is, is, is kind of ridiculous. The number should go up, but we default automatically for that. Okay, so the majority of our cases uh, are sole arbitrators. Uh, I try to convince people, uh, even for the large cases that are multi-million dollars, to go with one arbitrator. And the reason I do is because I feel very confident about our panel, and, and I feel like you're not, you're not going to get a rogue arbitrator. And uh, you know. Uh, going with a single arbitrator saves you five times more financially. Okay, it saves the client five times more. And it takes about six months more with three arbitrators, just the scheduling and all that kind of stuff. But again, the majority of our cases, because we do 300,000 cases, uh, and uh, the commercial cases that I do, even that area, which is about 10,000 cases, I would say in that case load, I would say, I would say about, uh, about 70% are uh, solo arbitrators and 30% are uh, a tribunal. But I'll, I'll tell you this right now, uh, arbitrators love to be in a tribunal. I mean, they do. I mean, they, 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 they feel like it's a lonely profession when you're by yourself uh, deciding a case and you can't obviously do ex parte communication or even talk to the person uh, in the elevator or whatever. Uh, they like to have bounce things off uh, their wing arbitrators. Uh, so, but uh, AAA, uh, we, anything above 500,000, uh, you know, we go with, uh, with three if it's silent. But you, I, I think, Elon, I think you had another question at the end of that one too. Yeah, is there ever any time right. when you've exceeded three arbitrators on a panel? Oh, okay. that's right, okay, good. That's a great question too. We hate that. <laughs> and we normally go with one or three. And uh, yes, uh, and, and mostly insurance cases, reinsurance, insurance cases, they have some really funky clauses that just drive us crazy. And, and, and sometimes they end up where if we do it, we'll end up having an even number. And if we have an even number, we can't do that. Right? Because, because let's say with three vote one way, three vote the other way, what are we gonna do? <laughs> so, uh, so our position, I, I've had those clauses where a board member can be on the panel, uh, you know, someone, you know, then they can select someone. And I had a case recently where it called for like, and it ended up being like six people, three on each side. And our position was, this is crazy, okay? Uh, this clause was drafted by someone that doesn't know arbitration, uh, and let's go with three. And then, they didn't want to, then I think with that case, we ended up going with seven, <laughs> but it is the, uh, it, it's not normal. It, 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 it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't happen that often. I would say 1% of our cases end up with that and, and, and we hate it. And, and it's, it's just not a good way of doing arbitration. I, I don't think personally, That's but great question. Right. All those people who want to act like they're a part of the Supreme Court uh, got to look elsewhere, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Supreme Court packing or, or, or arbitration packing. But it's most, I mean, I would, like I said, it's only 1% of those contract clauses. And, 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 and speaking of that, I mean, we see some ridiculous clauses out there like that. And ridiculous clauses where they call for, uh, you know, specifics about the arbitrator. Uh, you know, the, the person has to have 10 years of experience as an executive in a cosmetic firm or whatever. And we're like, oh, my God. You know, we have a lot of people on our panel, 6,000, but come on. <laughs> or they specifically mention a person. John Doe will be our arbitrator uh, for this you know, case. Well, then our position is, well, what if he passed away? Or what if, uh, you, know, you know, come on. I mean, it, it's, it's silliness. So, you know, look up, I mean, I'm not plugging uh, AAA. I'm plugging uh, drafting good clauses, Clause Builder. It's a, it's a program that we have online. It's free. It's called Clause Builder. It's our most hit site, and it's free again. And CPR has one similar to it. And you can draft a clause, okay, for arbitration. And it has a part in there about selecting arbitrators and how many arbitrators you should put on the, on the list or on, on your, in your contract. 
Yeah, it's, it's actually, I've experimented with that before. It's, uh, it's very, very useful. It's, it's a, a nice uh, engine also in terms of putting the, the clauses together. It's just, even if you don't have a, a currently a pending case, it's, I do recommend it to everybody. It's worthwhile just to go there and, and give it a run uh, just to see how it works out. It's, it's pretty sophisticated. I, especially from being an employee of the AAA, I used to be, I mean, for so many years, I was called by counsel on so many cases, like I'm drafting a clause and, and I would sit there and send them, send them uh, you know, templates and give them recommendations. Now all I say is go to Clause Builder. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all there. I was on the committee that formed it and it's a great, it, it really is a great site. And, and again, you don't have to use AAA. You can, you can you know, cross off AAA and, and put in any other provider. I'm not promoting AAA. I'm promoting good, clause drafting because I have cases and I, and I, and Nelson knows this, but I mentioned this, I think in his class, um, I have cases, a, a contract right now, 1961, the contract was drafted. It's a pending case at AAA and it involves a well-known author that everyone on this call knows, uh, everyone, and, and I can't mention it's confidential, uh, and, and movie rights and all that kind of stuff to a book. Uh, and in 1961, I'm a typewriter. And it's kind of neat. And it, it called for using AAA, uh, and, and it actually, it will well dra drafted clauses. These clauses last, for, last forever. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, nothing, nothing like a, an oldie, oldie and goodie at the same time. Uh, oh, yeah. We have another question from Angelina Serrano. Does uh, AAA conduct arbitration in languages other than English? And are there opportunities for bilingual arbitrators? Just Good, great question. Absolutely, we do, uh, and we have a num we have an ICDR branch, uh, the international branch, and yes, they do, uh, in a number of languages, uh, you know, so many languages, and we even had in our Midtown office. Uh, this was uh, really fought for when we were building out the space in 2013, a translation booth. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, why do we need a translation book? I'm in commercial domestic. And my international uh, colleague said, Jeff, come on, we, we do. And we had, do we use it a lot? No, I'd say, I'd say maybe uh, six, seven times a year. But yes, we do. I mean, and, and, and we do arbitrations, not just in the U.S. Uh, we do arbitrations around the world. And we do really look uh, favorably upon people, candidates that have multiple languages, uh, skills. Uh, it really does help when you're applying for a panel. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, for our ICDR branch. And even for our, our domestic branch, I mean, uh, for our domestic branch, mostly, uh, you know, the languages that we know in, in, in this country, Spanish uh, it primarily, uh, you know, that helps. It really does help. Okay. I think we are caught up on the, uh, the chat. Um, I guess now we're going to do is I'm just going to open it up to the floor. If anybody has a question, uh, just you can unmute yourself. And uh, Mr. Zeno is uh, here for... Uh, for the asking over here. So uh, go ahead and unmute, that's Alt-A, and uh, ask away. Or if we, uh, we exhausted all the, uh, the questions that we have, okay. Well, I'll, I'll mention one thing. Um, I mentioned earlier about the areas that were uh, negative about arbitration, employment, and consumer. And I'm not sure if anybody on this call uh, remembers, maybe you do or don't, uh, the expose by the New York Times. Where they did uh, a series on, on, on the Sunday Times about how bad arbitration is because of consumer and employment. We were interviewed at AAA for four hours. And uh, it was a really negative article about uh, arbitration because they were saying that's not fair or consuming. And, and, and like I mentioned earlier today, uh, you know, earlier tonight, uh, that we have a due process protocol. Uh, for consumer and employment are trying to do the best we can. Uh, but with respect to that, those articles, they were written by uh, people that written, didn't really understand arbitration. They really didn't understand arbitration. And it kind of was frustrating for us. And the, the, the kicker, here's the kicker. Uh, the New York Times has an employment arbitration clause for their employees. And they were, they were criticizing, uh, you know, employment arbitration. So I was like, uh, okay, we were like, yeah. But I mean, we, we wanted to... Uh, defend ourselves on that. And, I, and my position was we, we really don't have to because it's all on our webpage. We have, uh, you know, these due process protocols. We're, we're, I really do feel and strongly, and, and I don't want to sound dramatic, but we're the good guys. We're trying to level the playing fields. And I've heard from a lot of them, in, in, in employees that come to arbitration, they were frustrated. They're nervous about it, rightly so. And some of them were uh, pro bono, not pro bono, uh, you know, uh, you know, didn't have a counsel. And they said, wow, I got my day in court, you know, and, and it, another thing I mentioned earlier today was within with uh, respect to arbitration, which I love. 
uh, the confidentiality and the privacy of it. Uh, and some people think that's negative. We had a well-known uh, actress that everyone on this call would know, everyone is, is, is I, without a doubt at our office about nine months ago. And she loved the fact that she could walk around our office in Midtown. And some of you have been to our Midtown office. No one bothered her. No one took a photo, no one did any of that because you know, it, we're uh, the private sector. We're not going to do that. Uh, and uh, if, if a person was going into court, that may be a different situation. There'd be the press outside, there'd be all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the cool thing about uh, you know, a lot of people that want to use arbitration and mediation because they don't want you know, to you know, deal with uh, the public stuff that's going on. And we do a lot of high, high profile stuff, you know? Uh, you know, and it's kind of neat uh, that they feel that comfortable uh, with doing it with us. Thank you for, uh, for that perspective and uh, for that information. That's uh, always good to, to know. And uh, yeah, I mean, as, as you see also, they, there's been uh, a lot, especially in the tech sectors, of, as I've seen, Microsoft and, and other companies are putting in these clauses now, which effectively uh, kill people's access to the courts. It's, it's good to hear at least that uh, you guys are taking that into consideration. And that's always been uh, a concern, at least from the consumer side. So um, always good, good to hear. I, I do. I mean, again, if anybody wants to jump in, you know, go right ahead. I do have one other question that I sort of had uh, up my sleeve. To the extent that you've ever come across um, a situation where you have another arbitration provider who has to deal with the case first, either because you have a tiered clause, uh, I shouldn't say even a, an arbitration provider, an ADR provider, because you have a tiered clause, um, such as you have to do mediation first with this provider, and then they can go through arbitration with AAA, or alternatively, because there's a religious component, let's say the Beth Dean of America, for uh, cases, they the first parties have to try to bring their case there before they go to AAA. Um, I don't know if you ever had a case like that before, but how do you deal with, uh, you know, situations where you have to interact with another provider? Well, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm good friends, actually, with uh, several people from JAMS, CPR, FINRA. I do, actually, a lot of programs with them. And a lot of people don't know that we, they think, oh, you guys are competitors. You guys don't, you know, communicate. No, we communicate all the time. It's, it's nice to be with people that actually know what we are going through. <laughs> and, and, I, and I love it. I, I have a lot of good friends internally at JAMS. And, and also arbitrators, mediators that work for those institutions. But, yes. We have had, uh, you know, several cases like that where there's a step clause where it, you know, it went to jams first and then uh, they're required to go to AAA afterwards. Uh, I have uh, many cases uh, with non-AAA arbitrators that are on my cases, uh, you know, AAA cases in New York, uh, where there's some jams people, some ICC people, but a lot of, you know, a lot, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, it's not a problem at AAA. We accept that. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, say at AAA, we say anybody can hear your case if both sides agree. If both sides are in agreement, any, anybody can hear your case. And, and, and we see some interesting things. I mean, there was a clause I saw recently where it, it was required to be, if, if the parties couldn't agree, it had to be the president of the New York City Bar Association which we were like, oh, that's just crazy. <laughs> or it had to be the president of the AAA. And then the president of the AAA, uh, the president that, that, that I report to, India Johnson, uh, called me up and said, yeah, I'm not doing this. I go, I know you're not doing this. I go, so we're going to have to talk to the parties. And, and, and. So but, uh, the parties write uh, various things into the clauses. We kind of, kind of talk to them. But with respect to the other institutions, we, don't, we work great together. We really do. And uh, since the pandemic, we've been uh, really working together well with respect to doing programs and talking about uh, the pandemic and how we're addressing it. And, uh, you know, we're friends. And I, I, I love when I go to a, a, an in-person event uh, and people come up to us and say, oh, my God, why are you hanging out with this jams person and this CPR person? Well, we're friends. <laughs> so, but, you know, we have a good working relationship with, with all. Of them. And, and we're different. As you know, we're all, all the institutions have a different type of caseload. We're a different animal than jams. We're a different animal than CPR. Uh, and, 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 they, and they know that too. They accept that. We're all different. I mean, we have our, our certain roles and expertise and, uh, you know, and, and we have all, I think, have great arbitrators and mediators. It's uh, great to hear that. It's always good to see collaboration uh, drive in all fields of ADR and it certainly makes for oh. a yeah. yeah, I mean, the way I look at Eli is, is and I say to them, my, my, my colleagues and friends from these other institutions, 
uh, we're all out there promoting ADR and, and uh, we all believe in this. And, and a lot of us have been at these institutions for many years. And, and uh, if we can keep on promoting it, it's going to help. It's going to help JAMS and have AAA, CPR, FINRA, ICC. It helps all of us. So, you know, when I'm out, uh, you know, pushing ADR, it helps all the institutions as when they do too. And I think it also helps the courts. I mean, they're all of our judicial members that are, uh, you know, on, on the call tonight. It's, it's for sure they're going to be, uh, you know, happy to hear that. Uh, we have a question actually coming in that sort of uh, goes into the next area with, with COVID. We're probably going to see an increase in litigation. Uh, we've already seen it to a certain extent with insurance and business interruption claims, and I'm sure there's going to be other other claims, especially if anybody got the uh, the news with Amazon today, the, the suit that was filed. Uh, with Amazon that they apparently didn't adopt a, adequate protocols for workplace safety. That's uh, it's going to be in the news soon uh, and heating up. So this is from uh, William Beers. Uh, have you seen a major increase in demand for arbitration or mediation under COVID uh, in which areas? And then I'm just going to add a little quick add on to this question. Also, are there any plans for AAA to maybe have further involvements with the courts to uh, alleviate their caseloads through the use of arbitration as opposed to just mediation? Sure. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, we've seen an increase, uh, and we were surprised that, you know, we're lucky. We're, I mean, a, a lot of us on this call are, are the lucky ones in this pandemic where we can do our job and uh, continue to do our job since the pandemic hit. But yes, we're seeing COVID claims. I think it's a couple hundred that we've seen uh, since uh, COVID specifically related. And I, I actually have a really high profile one involving a racetrack and uh, business, business interruption, like you mentioned. Um, and we've seen Business, business interruption, insurance claims, uh, the, uh, you know, not the bankruptcy uh, stuff we're starting to see. So we are seeing them. And, and they're, like, like I mentioned, about 200 claims are, are, are coming in. So it's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, are we going to see a lot more? I, I think so. I mean, I really think so. But the insurance claims, it, that's debatable. I mean, because the insurance companies are saying, you know, you know we're not going to, you know, we're not, we're not going to allow these claims, but you know, we'll see. But uh, yes, we are, we are seeing. And, and I know the other ADR providers are because I was on a program with some of them last week and they said the same thing I'm saying. We're seeing them, but you know, it, it's going to be a lot. And, and then uh, I'm sorry, Elon, what was the, the final, the, the other question about that? Is there going to be any sort of uh, plan from, on AAA's part to interact with the courts? I mean, right now the courts do have ADR rules that provide for arbitrations, but they basically seem to focus more on the mediation uh, aspects of, of ADR as opposed to referring cases out to arbitration. But with the, uh, the deluge of all the COVID cases that, that has been talked about, are there any plans for AAA maybe helping out the courts to uh, alleviate some of the backlog and also just to take off some of the pressure? Absolutely. And we're reaching out to the court systems right now. Various What we're doing is we're contacting our arbitrators and mediators that have contacts with judges. Uh, we want to do a soft sell. We don't want to say that we want to take over your business. We want to say, hey, we're here. We can do it. And, and if you have a backlog, we're ready to help you out. Like that case I mentioned, that uh, you know, billion dollar uh, you know, case in, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that from, from Texas, a uh, bankruptcy case. So yeah, we're here and we're, we're, we're trying to get our VPs around the country to reach out to judges. I have a, a colleague of mine that right now is reaching out to some judges in New York uh, to see what we can do. And just to say, hey, listen, we're here. We do this stuff. We, uh, we can do any platform. Um, and I think we could help out. And, and like I mentioned, the, the court system contacted us. Uh, I didn't contact them about the small claims stuff. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you, know, the, you know, they contacted AAA and uh, we said, sure, we'll reach out to our mediators. So it, 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 we have a, I think all the providers have a good relationship with the court systems and we want to work with them. And we don't want, we're not trying to take your business at all. <laughs> we're just trying to say, hey, uh, if you are, are overburdened, uh, you know, we're here. And, and, and all the providers never shut down. So we're ready. I mean, we, we can do things quickly. And we have a lot of people at our disposal uh, that can help out. So, yeah, and to answer your question, without a doubt. We're, we're, right. we're working. So, so I'm sure our judicial uh, folks tonight here who are attending, they're going to be happy to hear, hear that. Um, all right, we have two more other questions that have come through. Uh, one from Diane O'Connell. Do you know how to get information on the Department of Financial Services program? Do you have a contact? I do, uh, and I can provide that. Uh, so if you want to, I'm going to put my email in here, yeah. and afterwards I'll provide it. I'm going to do it right now. I'll put my email in the thing for everybody. Uh, okay. Zano J. 
And I don't have it off the top of my head, but I have it in my email somewhere. Say no, J at ADR.org. So did I, did I do it right? Is it there? It's not, did you send it to everyone? Oh, no, I just sent it to one individual. Hold on. Right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That's um, usually the case after you hit it. Hit there. there you go. Okay, so yeah, please uh, email me with any questions or requests. And uh, yeah, I, I, I have some contacts there and you can just email them and find out uh, what they're doing. And, and, and they're terrific. We've been, we've had a great relationship with the state. We, uh, like we did the no fault stuff, Storm Sandy, and now we're doing the civil commotion, I mean, civil unrest stuff. So it, it's a great relationship. Okay, sounds uh, very promising. Uh, then we have another question from John Adam Kearns. How many mediations does AAA do a year nationally in the New York City area? Mediations. I think, I think about uh, over a thousand, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, we do a number of them. I mean, our, our, our business is primarily arbitration. Um, we, uh, as a company as a whole, not just New York, 80% of our business is arbitration, 20% is mediation. But I would say it's probably around a thousand cases. I mean, I'm talking my area. I'm talking uh, commercial area. Uh, with respect to like programs like uh, Storm Sandy, and when we have up programs, there's a ton of them <laughs> that are occurring. Uh, and the civil commotion thing, they'll be they'll add or inflate our numbers. But for the normal business to business stuff, probably around a thousand, somewhere around there. That's uh, certainly a lot, uh, you know, for doing that. And, uh, you know, great thing. That's always, uh, you know, anything, you know, a thousand uh, is, uh, is a, a nice number, you know, 10,000, whatever it is, but it's, it's, it's great to have that. A question that I, I think a lot of other people have, which I'm going to call the elephant in the room question. If you end up becoming a panelist uh, with the AAA and any of the panels, uh, you know, commercial, employment, labor, et cetera, uh, how do you uh, have your compensation determined? Great, great question. Uh, a lot of people don't know that answer. You determine it, uh, you, you determine uh, what your uh, compensation is going to be. And uh, it, you are an independent contractor, uh, independent. Uh, we, AAA, uh, we work for the clients, okay, for the parties. We don't work for the arbitrators and the mediators. So we're not uh, assigned to an arbitrator or a mediator. And basically our focus is on the parties. The mediators and arbitrators are terrific. They're the face of the AAA and, and they do a wonderful job, uh, but they're independent. And we review them every three years so we can rotate them off, uh, you know, based on anything, uh, based on caseloads dropping, whatever or they're not being selected and they determine what they want. And what I do when, when I get a new arbitrator or a new mediator and I talk to them, uh, you know, a couple every, every month, uh, I say, listen, here's what you should potentially bill for the market. Uh, but it's your call. And then I get some people that say, well, I'm at a law firm and I'm making $1,200 an hour. And, uh, you know, I want to build that. I'm like, well, you, you can, but you're not going to get any cases. <laughs> you're not going to get the smaller cases as a new arbitrator or whatever. Uh, the, the rate for a new arbitrator at AAA is usually around in New York. I'm only talking New York right now. It's probably around $450 uh, an hour. Uh, and then really experienced arbitrators are around $650, $700. Some judges are around uh, $800, $900, uh, maybe $1,000. Uh, but again, it's your call and, and we tell, and you can change it. Uh, you can't change it when you're handling a case, <laughs> you know, can't, at the beginning of the case, you're, you're, you're billing at $800 and then you bill more. You can, you can change it at any point uh, and we don't control that. So, right, so that, just a just point then that the Janice raised just to, uh, as a, an aspect of clarification, she wrote, unless you were on the consumer panel, then it is a set amount or from what you just described, it doesn't seem like it's, it is said, maybe she means that it's a range. Uh, no, 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 she's right. I'm consumer. I don't do consumer because that's not considered. It's commercial, but it's not really commercial in my division. There is a set rate. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but it is a set rate. We have set rates for consumer, uh, for expedited cases for New York. I think it's $1,200 for the whole case. And that's it. That's all you get. So if you sign up for consumer, expedite it, it's a set rate. And, and uh, that's what it is. Uh, okay, I just see right now someone put $2,500. Oh, thank you. Okay, there you cool. Go. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Okay, but you, have, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do have flat rates, which is uh, is always interesting. Though. Nelson had a question uh, that he wanted to ask, I think, live. So, Nelson, why don't you unmute and uh, go ahead? Oh, you're still muted. 
Not yet. Okay. So uh, as we wind down, I wanted to ask you, I know that every place that you speak, everybody wants to know what you can do for them. That's just the reality of things. So I wanted to know what our group, the ADR committee can do uh, to help you to make your uh, job a little bit easier. Is there anything that we can do like volunteering for some of these projects or any other thing, having you uh, come by periodically or what can we do to help you, Jeff? Uh, thank you, Nelson. That's a, that's a terrific uh, uh, you know, statement and terrific question. Uh, what, you can, what you can do for the ADR providers, not just AAA, is uh, obviously when we have uh, these kind of mass claims, uh, volunteer uh, your time. I mean, and, and a lot of people did volunteer their time. And, and some people are doing pro bono work for, for AAA, not for us, but for the clients, and uh, volunteer for that stuff. But also, if you have contacts uh, in, in, in poor jams for AAA, for CPR, if you have contacts in major organizations that are not uh, ADR friendly, get us, get us in the door. Uh, and I say this to our arbitrators that are new on our panel. I say, listen, uh, it's a two-way street. You know, we want to promote, and again, I'm not necessarily promoting AAA. I'm just promoting ADR. Let us get through the door to a company that you have some contacts at or somebody that you know in a law firm. Let us go there and give a presentation like I'm doing tonight to talk about, uh, and I'm not talking so much tonight because you guys all know ADR, but let us talk about the benefits of ADR. And, and uh, you know, there's studies out, out there that we've done, JAMS have done, CPR, FINRA, whatever, ICC. Get us, get us through the door on those places. And uh, that would help. That would help tremendously. And also, again, to volunteer for these programs when they come up. And, and I'm not wishing upon us more uh, disasters uh, that we've had, like Storm Sandy and this, what we're going through. But when those occur, please volunteer. And, and, and we're here to take volunteers. Uh, but get us through the door to, to explain to people uh, that don't understand ADR right now. Uh, but yeah, that, great question, Nelson. Thank you. And we also had a question uh, from back a while ago, picking up on the uh, on the backtracking from Toby Dress uh, Germain. Um, the question is, can you explain a bit more about the civil unrest cases? Sure. Uh, those are cases uh, involving uh, you know, a, a company that, uh, or a, a store or a, uh, a vendor that has been looted or broken into, uh, that has, I believe under a hundred employees, uh, it's, it's, this is all state required. It's not uh, AAA. The state requires this under a hundred employees, a small business, uh, involving the insured and the, ins and the insurance company. And those are the cases right now. And we're not looking at a lot. We're looking at probably, I, I, I'm, I'm estimating about 500 cases or more, a little bit more. I think a lot of them are going to settle. I think the insurance companies will settle, but it's basically the insurance company versus the insured and, and base, basically involving, involving small business. This is not Macy's that, that, you know, that, that was broken into or Apple. This is involving uh, you know, small business owners. Uh, the state said that they want to introduce this program uh, through the AAA because they worked with us with Storm Sandy and other programs, and, and that's what it is. And, and uh, you, know, uh, you know, are we going to see a lot of cases with that? I don't know. I mean, I, we're starting to see, you know, we're starting to see people negotiating things with us uh, about it. But it's, uh, I think it's a good thing that we're doing. I think it's a good thing that the state's doing. Uh, you know, and and, I, and I, the insurance companies are great too. I, I, I got to admit, with Storm Sandy, and I've been on a lot of uh, programs about insurance stuff. Um, the insurance companies really do want to pay out and help. They really do. I mean, they're not, they're not the evil people that a lot of people are making them out to be. I sat in through a lot of the mediations. They're, they're trying to, you know, come on. They're, they're, they're saying Storm Sandy was terrible. What happened with the civil unrest was terrible. Let's you know, compensate these people. But that's what it is. And then Leslie, I think, had a uh, question. Are we talking about uh, BOP business owners policies? Yes, we are. Yes. And, uh, you know, right now it's uh, premature for me to talk about the caseload. It's just starting, you know, uh, you know we uh, immediately help the state get this program up and running, but it's, it's premature for me to talk about, you know, where we're at with things because we don't really, have, I don't have the data on it right now, but I I'm glad we're doing it. I, I really am. I'm glad the state, uh, you know, want to work with us. 
that sounds like a great program. So uh, let's hope that uh, that certainly will uh, most your other efforts will serve to uh, keep conflict down and, uh, and keep all of us uh, in business at the same time, which is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, we're about reaching, um, you know, the end. Actually, wait, wait, I do see one more from Sarah Kula. I, she's, I see what she's doing. She's referring to the consumer panel. I think you're going to say it's the same thing, go to ADR.org, but, you know, maybe it's, it's something different. Are there any special instructions for applying, applying to the consumer case panel? Yeah, I would just look on the consumer panel, I mean, on the, on the ABR.org, and if you can't find it, just email me, and I can direct you to uh, my, my good colleagues in the, uh, the consumer division. Uh, we have people in Providence, uh, Rhode Island, and people in uh, California that handle our consumer caseload, um, and they, that, my God, that, that caseload is going through the roof right now. Uh, employment and consumer right now is, is booming at, at AAA. It's like, obviously, we know why. <laughs> because of what's going on. And I just put your email address back there again. Um, so I think that's uh, essentially it right now. I just wanted to discuss one or two uh, quick committee matters. We still do, do, do have 10 minutes afterwards. It'll take me about three minutes. I want to ask everybody right now to save the chat. Um, we had a, a great chat. There's a lot of information, even, uh, you know, even though this is going to be recorded, you do get stuff in the chat, including Jeff's email address, and then we have the ADR.org uh, address, as well as the file that I sent around. So um, to do that, for those people who may not be familiar with the feature, if you go into Zoom um, on the chat uh, function, that's Alt-H, right next to uh, the file icon, you'll see three dots, and there you should see something that says Save Chat. If you don't um, happen to see that, or if you have a problem with it, don't worry. I can save you the chat afterwards. Um, and I, so far as I have it, and I just saved it to a, a folder which is set out. But if anybody can you know, save their chat, especially if you have your own comments to it, uh, I'm not gonna save your comments that you did privately. I can't, that's one of Zoom's security features. So please do save the chat, um, you know, especially if you sent around something privately, just so you have it. And uh, with that, I'm just gonna give the uh, other quick announcements that we had uh, on the agenda, we spoke about the uh, upcoming programs, uh, just because I know there are people have, who have to go, but uh, I'm certainly, uh, you know, keep this meeting open for, uh, for as long as anybody wants to stay on. And we do have another uh, 10 minutes after this, but uh, just very quickly, uh, last uh, month we had our committee meeting mem uh, meeting that uh, we usually have, our monthly meeting, and uh, we had two requirements that were put in. So one of which, by the way, everybody's meeting tonight who are members. Uh, there's a requirement now, now effective for seven committee meetings or events during the 2020-21 committee year that runs from September through June. Um, you know, it's the traditional NICLA uh, time, so that's uh, a requirement. And again, you know, anybody needs an accommodation if you live abroad and, and what else you still want to join, certainly uh, ask us, we could waive it for you, but uh, it's just expected that, you know, we're putting together these things, we want people to come, and I have to thank everybody again for, for coming tonight. We had uh, close to, I think, over, over 90 people at one point tonight, which is great. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. And uh, the other thing is dues. You know, like many other organizations, we do charge dues. Not a, not a uh, ton, but it's not, it's not a small amount either. But it does allow us to put forth this great program like you have tonight. Uh, it's $36 for the year. Uh, someone asked me, does that have any correlation to the number 18? It does. It's double times the number 18, which in Jewish tradition is the life. So everybody should be safe uh, amidst the pandemic. That's the idea. Twice over, uh, double double for that. Uh, you get uh, uh, a double measure for that. But uh, mm -hmm. aside from the symbolic significance, and also we just did a, an economic a mathematical analysis. And uh, even without our uh, food that we used to have, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to have that, uh, please God, sooner rather than later when we get this, this pandemic finally quashed. But uh, even without the food, we still do have expenses, and that's what the $36 is for as well. It allows us to put on these programs, uh, as well as the great trainings at a discount, uh, which are coming up. So uh, that, those are the other two examples, uh, the other two announcements that I just had. So again, uh, you heard uh, that you uh, will be having a, a bunch of events that we're planning coming up. Please book our calendars for October 28th. Uh, November 11th. And again, for those, uh, especially for those people who are special masters with the AD2D, we're offering a very big discount for that entrenchment training program. And with that, um, that's the official part of the meeting, but I'm going to keep it going. Uh, if anybody else has any additional questions for Jeff, we still got 10 minutes left, as, as I just said before. So um, anybody have uh, any additional questions? Does anybody have any questions regarding the NICLA, the R committee? You know, 
the other thing I, I just want to do before everybody goes, Jeff, thank you so much. Um, we got a lot of comments in the, in the chat saying this was a great presentation, and that's an understatement. It was an extremely informative uh, and uh, useful presentation, uh, aside from being great. So uh, that all, all goes into it. I think everybody enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was uh, something which uh, we were looking forward to. And uh, it's great that, again, so many people came out. So uh, well, thank, thank you thank so much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Elon and Nelson. I mean, it, was, it was great to be a part of this tonight, and uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a great opportunity, and I, I love your organization, I, and you guys are, are great leaders of this, of this organization. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And Chris, just uh, why don't you pipe your head up just to say hi. Chris, Chris has been uh, in the background actually sending around uh, screenshots, which we'll be posting later on. Uh, we got some very good ones. We tried to to get you without your uh, eyes closed and uh, smiling. We got it. We did get a couple of them, all, all getting inside. So Chris, why don't you pipe in just for a second? Yeah, hi guys. Thank you everyone for attending tonight. But of course, a uh, huge thanks to, to Jeff uh, for, for a very informative uh, and knowledgeable talk tonight. I, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, and I'll hand it back to Ilan. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Chris right. is our Brooklyn guy. Uh, cool. <laughs> By way of Australia. <laughs> hey, we, we all have a lot of town halls to do tonight. I think all, both town halls are being done simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. And actually, in that, in that regard, uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because there actually is a way in Zoom, if anybody's interested to, uh, unless they corrected it, to accidentally, quote unquote, engage in crosstalk. We had one person at one of our trainings who was attending two separate Zoom meetings uh, on a one internet connection. And it was so happened that it happened to be the second meeting was a children's birthday party. So in the middle, <laughs> when we're running a divorce mediation simulation about the division of the assets, all of a sudden we hear, I want some cake too. <laughs> I no one knew where this was coming from. So hopefully they'll do that with the town halls tonight. <laughs> It's going to be interesting tonight. Yes. And I, I see Linda said thank you because uh, she's from Connecticut. But uh, Linda, I'm from Connecticut, so I grew up there. And I, I deem Connecticut to be part of New York, <laughs> uh, Connecticut, New Jersey. Uh, so, so thank you, Linda. Yeah, so, yeah, it's great that you know, the internet allows everybody to get Zoom and allows everybody to get together like this. One other point, by the way, that I should mention is uh, right behind me. Mediators Meeting Online, uh, that's another project of the New York County Lawyers Association. You do not need to be a member of the committee in order to join that group. That's a group of mediators from all over the world, uh, everywhere and anybody, uh, for one hour on the fourth Tuesday each month. That's going to be October 27th. So that's one day before the starting and maintaining an ADR practice in the age of COVID-19 and beyond CLE. Uh, it's completely free, which, uh, again, is given to us by the resources of the New York County Lawyers Association. So that's what your dues help to go towards. Um, that, that has been a phenomenal resource. And uh, it, it, we actually have a Google Doc. I mentioned it before to, to Jeff. I'm going to put it in the chat very quickly. If anybody wants to see some of the topics that we discuss, um, they range you know, from the advantages uh, of ADR and ODR to... Uh, technical issues uh, dealing with people in waiting rooms and uh, Zoom advancements and uh, the, the gamut, you know, goes from here to there. We've actually had some very poignant uh, meetings as well when uh, Judge Deere, of blessed memory, unfortunately passed away. We actually did an online tribute to him uh, that, that was read out. So uh, there's certainly been some emotional uh, moments as well. So the, uh, if anybody's interested, uh, the MOO Google Doc, and we'll just put it in the chat, is located here. And uh, you can see what we, you know, we deal with. But again, everybody and anyone is invited to, to join that. And yes, for those people who are focused more on arbitration, once in a while, we also deal with arbitration. It is, the focus is primarily on mediation. But as long as you, you know, follow the rules uh, for putting in your topics, we ask that you put the topics in advance by going to that Google Doc, and then we grade them out as we discuss them. Uh, we've dealt with arbitration uh, issues before. And it's actually one time we even uh, discussed in brief uh, a presentation that was done by uh, Justice Bellin out in, uh, in JAMS, where he was talking about using ODR techniques for arbitrations and how we could use that to then deal with mediations as well. There's a, there's a lot of crossover, and it's great to see that AAA is, is uh, getting to that field as well. It's certainly uh, the wave of the future. Um, okay, so I think that's uh, basically it. we got four more minutes. 
So, uh, you know, Jeff is here. Now's your, your chance. Ah, Danielle, you have your hand up. Uh, wonderful. It's the first person tonight who actually used the hand feature. Yes. It's cool. All right, so uh, Danielle, go ahead. Get on mute. Danielle, I still see you're here. Hang on, let me see. I, are you unmuted? Danielle, you have to hit Alt-A to unmute. Let's see if I can. And, okay, maybe she stepped away from her, uh, I see you're in the gallery right now. Yep, she must have stepped away. All right, with that, anybody else have, uh, oh, actually, I see there actually, ironically, is an Amy Barrett with us tonight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's always nice to see that. Uh, I'm, I don't think that's the, now it would be Amy Coney Barrett, but it's like that. But I, I, I think she's from, from New York. Um, but if, uh, oh, we do have a question from Cheryl Messina. Uh, as a AAA arbitrator, is there an ability to buy into group health insurance? Okay, good question to the end off. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. I mean, uh, we, we deem our arbitrators to be independent, but not uh, employees of the AAA. Uh, so, uh, you know, no, I mean, uh, and I'm not sure if any other provider does that either, but definitely no. Okay. So that's the, the quick answer to that. Um, anybody else have any other questions from for Jeff? So like that? Uh, okay, William, go ahead. Yep. No, you're just, you're just, uh, well, well, you get on mute at this point. Money, money on mute if you wanted to say, say something. I should say questions, comments, and observations. Hang on. Uh, William, you have to hit Alt A. So, 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 okay, so thank you, Jeff. Uh, great job. Uh, we are all inspired to do, uh, to work with you, and we appreciate uh, your insights and your, your coaching and your help. Uh, and really, you're helping everybody, and you're helping the, the litigants and, and uh, calming the, uh, the, the sturm and drawing in, in the street. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So with that, we're at uh, 7.58, and uh, we're basically at the conclusion of our meeting. If anybody, again, wants to join the ADR committee, first again, I want to thank Jeff for the wonderful job tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, if I have my... Uh, clapping uh, hand over here and i give you that one and i'll give you the uh, you. <laughs> party hat also you know it's, it's, it's great oh, thing very to nice. very this whole thing. So thank you for that and uh, by the way zoom apparently now from what i understand is uh introducing studio effects to uh to the various um you know uh virtual backgrounds that you have so you can very actually cool. dress yourself up i think uh just uh to show you uh, what I'm talking about. Can I, can I put some hair on my head? It's yeah, that's good. what I was going to say. They, they, they have stuff like that, apparently, <laughs> where, where you can add in, like, uh, a yeah, mustache and beard. Uh, I don't know if they're, yeah, there's a, you see something like that. There's a, a horseshoe, a chevron mustache. And, uh, yeah, I just gave myself more of a, of a scruff than I just did. Oh, uh, look, at Chris, look at Chris right now. Chris put something. <laughs> but Chris, yeah. we'll talk. Later, Chris, we'll talk later about doing hair on our head. <laughs> right. Yes. So I was about to say, eventually you can do that as well. They they were talking about that today. It's um, Certainly a, a, a interesting uh, way to keep meetings fun um, and avoid Zoom fatigue. Uh, as a practice. <laughs> but uh, all kidding aside, thank you again so much for uh, for coming tonight. If anybody. Thank wants you. Join the um, ADR committee. Uh, please send an email to me. Uh, do you have my email address? It's eWineRep at WineRepLaw.com. Um, you can tell, see that from uh, all the invites that you guys got. Or alternatively, you know, contact Chris or, or Nelson. And um, again, you know, requirements. So you heard them tonight from, uh, from what we had before. Uh, $36 for the year and just attendance at these uh, events and, and programs. Is easily done uh, considering you already have three of them you know, inclusive of tonight coming up uh, within the next two or three months. And um, it's uh, just a, a phenomenal opportunity for ADR. Also, we were talking about people asking about experience. Just a quick plug for the Part 137 program. NYCLA's Part 137 program is one of the only ones in the state, if not the only one, that handles both arbitrations and mediations at the same time. And uh, for those people who actually want to get panel experience uh, as being uh, part of a tribunal, uh, a three-person, the threshold is much lower than triples A, triple A's. You only have to have a case where the amount of controversy is ten thousand uh, dollars or higher, uh, from ten thousand to fifty thousand in Part One Thirty Seven to have a tribunal. 
and you will have the opportunity to work with non-lawyers because in tribunals, uh, three-person panels, under Part 137, the rule is, is that one of the arbitrators has to be a non-lawyer. So it's, it's a great experience. I've done it before. I've been a chair. I, I've been a wing. I've, I've served with people who are junior to myself. I've served with people who are senior to myself. It's just a, a great opportunity. And again, watch your calendars in December. Uh, December 9th is going to be the first day of that program. And then uh, there'll be another day afterwards. The first day we'll be focusing on the arbitration aspects of Part 137 cases. And then for the first time, we're actually going to be focusing on Part 137 mediations, uh, which was, as far as we know, has never been done before. So it's its own day in training. Uh, it's a half day, really, but it's, uh, it's going to be certainly robust and a lot of uh, uh, great information and role plays, uh, by the way, as well, for those people who are, are seeking role plays for Part 137 mediations. And yes, Nelson just put in Part 137 is attorney-client fee disputes. It is a pro bono program, but it's probably uh, one of the best, if not the best way to gain panel experience uh, as an arbitrator. Uh, if you want to see what it's all about, and it's just a lot of fun also. So um, that's uh, my plug for that. And uh, again, uh, we're, we're at time now. So uh, last chance, if anybody has any questions for Jeff. All right, so it looks like that's it. Jeff, thank you so much again. I wish everybody well and uh, do stay safe. And again, uh, last chance now, do save the chat. I'm saving mine right now uh, by going to the chat dialogue. That's Alt H and the three dots. Uh, click on the three dots and go to save chat. And with that, uh, I wish everybody well. And good luck with your respective cases and your endeavors. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.